That's what I get for attending the program. Uh, my sure thing thought. Here we go. This was probably writing and highlighter. I don't know. And welcome to 6.2. And we start off a little bit with keys and such. So let's take a look. Calorimetry measures the quantity of heat. That's not temperature. That's heat. That's Q exchange. So a common lab and a lab that we do sophomore year, if you had a sophomore year, was put a hot thing off in a solid into cold water and record the change in temperature. So here's an example for one. A 10, gram, 10 grams of gold, specific heat point one two nine joules per gram degree Celsius, at 95 degrees Celsius. Now, by the way, the way we get this temperature, it's often in boiling water. So if I put it in boiling water for a long time, 10 minutes, then it's the temperature of the boiling water. Okay, so I use 95 because water rarely boils at 100.00, but 95 works. Or you can put it in an oven too. It's at 20 grams of water, specific heat of 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius at 20 degrees Celsius. Determine the final temperature of the water. Okay, so here's what we're looking at here. Okay, this is kind of the description. The energy of the hot lost equals the energy of the cold gain. Okay. So energy is mc delta t, and delta t is t sub f minus t sub i. So this is negative. I'm going to hold that negative out there for a while. This is going to be positive because it's gaining it, right? So if the hot thing touches the cold thing, the hot thing gives its energy to the cold thing. The hot thing gets colder, the cold thing gets warmer, until they reach dun, 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 thermal equilibrium. So then and what I did was, here's my hot thing, which was gold. Gold. So 10 grams, 0.129, and T sub F minus 95. Notice the order of the T sub F matters. The numbers for gold. Okay. On the other side, we're doing the same thing. So the mass of the water, doink. Specific heat, doink. And it starts at 20. Doink. Oops, I forgot my, to close my parentheses. Okay. Determine the delta T of the water. So now what I'm going to do is um, distribute. Ah, distribute. I'm going to leave my negative sign hanging out here, and the mathematicians in the world probably hate this. So 10 times 0.129. Ah, I'm using a terrible calculator. So I have 1.29 times T sub F minus 95 equals 20 times 4.18 equals 83.6 times T sub F minus 20. Um, I'm very careful when I have to distribute stuff. There's my negative sign on here. So I'm going to now distribute 1.29 T sub F minus 1.29 times negative 95. equals um, 122.55 equals 83.6 T sub F, distributing again, minus 20 times 83.6. Whoa, that's a big one, 167.2. Okay, so now I'm going to collect my terms. So well, first I'm going to distribute the sign. So negative, boom, positive. See how I distributed my negative finally? And I'm hopping over here, so I thought I had a little too much space, but I didn't. So I'm going to collect my T sub Fs on the right-hand side. And I'm going to collect, go to the green. I'm going to move, I'm going to pair up these numbers and put them on the left-hand side. Okay? So 122.55 plus 167.2. Whoops. 1,672. Whoops is 1794.55 equals, again, I'm going to move this part over to here, so I'm going to add it, 83.6 plus 1.29 is 84, whoa, 84.89 T sub F. So again, I'm just solving for T sub F. 
dividing both sides by 84.89, 1794.55. Divided by 84.89, I say a little prayer to the chemistry gods that my temperature is between 20 and 95. Please, 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 please. And my answer is 21.1 degrees Celsius. Now that might scare you a little bit, okay? So notice that um, I have twice as much water, right, as gold. So that means it should be closer to gold. And notice the specific heat difference is 0.129, very small, versus um, 4.18, which is like 40 times more, right? So that's why it's so big. Okay. So long mean questions, the worst part is that negative side and how you decide to distribute whenever you decide to do that. And then to remember to distribute through the parentheses. All right, energy of phase changes. We got a little equation for that. Um, Q equals M delta H fusion or M delta H vaporization. So fusion, what's that? It's the energy to melt or freeze one gram of a substance. Vaporization, what's that? It's the energy to boil or condense one gram of a substance. Okay, it is very important that you know that boiling is much, 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 much larger than melting. The distance change is enormous for liquid to gas versus solid to gas. So here's a liquid. Oh, well, here's a solid. It's a liquid. Remember, liquids are typically, not with water, but everything else, a touch bigger, touch more scrambly. All right. Now notice the temperature would be the same. This is liquid. Now if I change that to a gas, and I'm going to burst the, the lid open on it, I'm going to pretend that this lid burst open. Oh, look, I just got, uh, there's a dot behind your ear. Okay, so notice how the particles, this is the gas, very far. And remember how bond energy is Q1, Q2 over radius squared. We'll put a little K in there. I'm changing that radius an enormous amount. Their distance is enormously large. So, phase change graph. Boom, boom. Solid warming. Point. Um, this is time for heating. This is temp. Solid warming and melting. Doink, doink. Warm, melt. Warming, melting, liquid warm. Solid. I'm adding solid and liquid, solid, solid, and liquid, pure liquid. Liquid worms. Mm. Solid worms melts, oh, solid worms melts, liquid worms boils. So notice phase changes are plateaus. Okay. Cold solid to hot gas. Da, da, da. Cold solid. Warm solid. Melts. Cold liquid. Warm liquid. Boils. Hot gas. Okay. Now I'm going to change that a little bit. Make it a little bit better. Cold solid melts. To... Pretend that's a straight line. Yes. It is huge. Why? Because that energy changes enormous. Gas only condenses. So here is temperature. So this is time of cooling. And if it's just condensing, it's just a straight line. Ooh, gas only, oh yeah. Gas condenses and liquid cools. You get the idea how it works. All right, so from this guy, you should be able to derive everything else solid. Solid and liquid. Liquid. Liquid and gas. Gas. All right. Odd phase changes, but whoa, look for all the weird things. Heat of fusion plus heat of vaporization is heat of sublimation, which is going directly from a solid to a gas. Oops, I put a liquid when I said gas. Directly from a solid to a gas. Oh, here we go. Or directly from a gas to a solid. 
sublimation is going to, there you go, I just said that. Deposition is gas dissolved directly. So notice how it's got two names, right? So you can call it sublimation. And deposition is only gas dissolved. Make sure you know the temperature does not change during a phase change. Um, potential energy change versus kinetic energy change. So I'm going to pick this one and show you potential and kinetic energy changes. Um, here's my kinetic energy change. Oh, don't do that to me, please. Okay. And here's my potential energy. So, oh, come on. PE is phase change, and KE is the slanted part, um, temperature change. So remember, kinetic energy is temperature is average kinetic energy. So if your temperature isn't increasing, kinetic energy is increasing. At a phase change, both states of matter exist. Freezing point is identical to melting point. Boiling point is identical to convection point. Pure states of matter exist on the slant of the heating curve. And all particles must phase change before the temperature increases at the melting point or boiling point. And then this is what we did in our lab. Heat of reaction. Delta H equals Q over moles. And that's moles of the limiting reactant. So we'll do this real quick. So given this, C3HA plus O2. Um, yield CO2 plus H2O. When 3 grams of C3HA react with an excess of 200 grams of water, I'm sorry, excess of O2, comma, 200 grams of water will raise temperature of 45 degrees. Find delta H reaction. Self for Q. So in this case, we have water raising its temperature 45 degrees. Q equals MC delta T. Okay. So we're going to find that Q. So Q is going to equal the mass of the water, 200. Specific heat of the water has been given a couple of times. You're going to end up memorizing it whether you like it or not. That is the specific heat of water. And the change in temperature. You notice it was raised 45, not 245 or anything like that. So that's going to be like Q. Um, clear. 200 times 4.18 times 45 is a big number. 37, 620. Find the delta H of the reaction kilojoules per mole. So this is joules. So that's going to be 37.6 kilojoules. Just move the decimal three places over to make kilojoules. And then we're going to solve for the moles of C3H8. Okay, so moles of C3H8 is um, 3 grams of, C, oops, grams of C3H8 times, uh, go to the periodic table, 36 plus 8. 44.11, I added the 0.01s in there, is 1 mole C3H8. So then 3 divided by 44.11 is a low number. 0 0.0680 moles C3H8. So then we're trying to find delta H of the reaction. So now we're going to do delta H Q per mole. So delta H is Q over moles. Here's Q. Here's moles. So it's going to be 37.6 over 0.068. 37.6 divided by second answer is 553 kilojoules per mole, okay? And, yeah, we'll stop it there. That kind of matches close to what we've been doing before. So on that happy note, I will say toodle.